bonjour, euh, merci d'être là. Euh, on a le plaisir d'accueillir Manon Labarchède, voilà, qui est euh, architecte et sociologue et qui s'intéresse beaucoup, et avec vraiment une approche très originale, euh, s'intéresse beaucoup aux environnements, à la manière d'adapter, d'aménager les lieux de vie dans les établissements d'hébergement euh, pour personnes âgées, y compris des mentes. Voilà, elle a vraiment une, une approche extrêmement intéressante. Elle va faire sa présentation en anglais. Puis en plus, en, ensuite, bien sûr, on, on aura le temps pour les questions. Voilà, merci Manon. Hello everyone. So, my name is Manon Abarched and I'm an architect and PhD in sociology. I'm currently working on a postdoctoral fellow on the project COMPAC, a comparative approaches to policies for autonomy in cares. Uh, this project is one of the winners of the PPR Autonomy um, program. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for this, of this seminar for uh, inviting me to present my research work uh, on long-term uh, care facility for people with Alzheimer's disease or related disease. And I also like to apologize because this is the first time I'm going to uh, talk in English, so I'm going to read my text a lot and uh, I hope I'll be uh, sufficiently uh, comprehensible. So uh, my presentation today is entitled uh, Restoring Freedom of Action by Rethinking Living Spaces of Long-Term Care Facilities for Adult Adults. Um, the elements I present are based on my uh, thesis entitled Alzheimer's Disease Spaces, Living Condition and Accommodation and Hospitality. Uh, which I uh, defended in uh, 2021 under the supervision of Guy Tapie, a uh, professor of sociology in, uh, at Bordeaux School uh, of Archi Architecture, and uh, Muriel Renfrey, uh, hospital practitioner and university uh, professor. Uh, this thesis is based on the analysis of various collective uh, accommodation units for people suffering from Alzheimer's disease, using uh, semi-directive interviews and observation uh, inside each establishment. And the aim of this thesis was to examine the evolution of collective accommodation for people suffering from Alzheimer's disease by looking at the architecture of this establishment. So, why are you talking about architecture? Uh, because architecture is particularly present in everyday life. Firstly, because it carries representation, whether positive or negative. When we walk into a space, we automatically form an opinion about it. Uh, we may find it pleasant or austere, uh, we may feel good there, or we may feel oppressed. Secondly, because in, it imposed daily limitations that shape the way we use the space, the way we make it our own, and the way we structure our social relationships. For example, in an amphitheater, the architecture is designed so that all eyes are on the person speaking, me. And uh, she is highlighted and the hierarchy is established between the speaker and his audience. Final, finally, uh, under specific conditions, architecture offers people the ability to make space their own, to make the place where they live and uh, to project the spaces they want into it, the spaces that seem most important to them. So the aim of this presentation is to use various case studies, which I present in little more detail later, to identify the role that architecture can play in influencing people's freedom of action within establishments. The aim is to co consider the place of architecture in a broader system uh, through the hospitality offered to the people welcome into this structure. So, hospitality takes a different look at collective accommodation by highlighting the capacity of establishment to be shelter or refugees for sick people and questions the relationships between the person host and their guest. Hospitality helps to understand the complexity and the diversity of this establishment by focusing on three logics. The first one is the social logic 
and examines the relation between individuals and more specifically the space uh, accord to sick people uh, raising questions about the ethical modalities of their support. The spatial logic puts into perspective the dynamic of appropriation and the different approaches to a conception of space designed for a specific population. And the therapeutic logic refers to the way uh, in which the disease is managed, high scientific uh, knowledge involves, and the burden it places on individuals and their families. So in these studies, we study three types of establishments, two dedicated units defined uh, as small living units within uh, an HEPA type of establishment, two specialized institutions dedicated, dedicated uh, exclusively to Alzheimer's uh, the disease, and two innovative projects, put into perspective with the foreign uh, model from that were inspired, specifically the Henri Emanuele uh, land village and uh, crawl houses. So in this way, we have identified various hospitality uh, configuration that provide a framework for interpreting the condition under which patients patient are received and help us to understand the logic behind the design of spaces. Uh, as we will see in greater detail later, hospitality is more controlled in dedicated units, more autarkic in specialized, specialized institutions, and more inclusive in innovative projects. So as I say, hospitality is controlled within dedicated units uh, whose the principal aim is to limit the consequences of illness and its manifestation. The dedicated units is a pragmatic answer uh, to the need for institutional care, institutional care for the sick and has quickly become a benchmark because it is so easy to set up. It is a part of a process of adaptation of the institutional model and aims to recreate an original and unique domestic universe combining collective living spaces with the preservation of intimate space. So space is designed to control illness by securing, delimiting, and organizing this environment. First of all, security means closing the unit off from the rest of the establishment and accessing it by code or badge to limit residents' movement. Security is also referred to almost constant surveillance of residents using spatial elements such as glass wall or patio to ensure that care staff can always keep an eye on them. In this plan, you can see it, this element just here and here, and all the staff can uh, see the, the resident. Delimitation, which is also uh, related to security, refers to the integration of the unit into the EPAD, which is often relegating to the back of the building and has poor links with uh, the rest of the establishment. Both indoor and outdoor areas dedicated to patients and those accessible to other residents are distinct from each other. Within the unit itself, the boundaries reveal a very clear and precise spatial division and function, making it possible to determine the uses and players associated with each area. Finally, the organization highlights a schematic design of that unit spaces based on an organizational approach taking sorry, into account the behavior disorder of sick people. Resident bedroom in blue, and uh, care areas in red um, uh, surround the more collective outdoor and indoor spaces, as you can see in, um, in yellow and green. Um, circulation are designed to create a walking loop that always brings residents back to the same point, and the organization of collective spaces is divided into corners. You uh, may see music corner, dining corner, lounge corner, TV corner, and this freezing the space and its possible uses. 
in a specialized institution, hospitality is autarkized. They represent a new stage in the correspondence between the specificity of a population and the spatial characteristic employed. They attempt to recreate, to recreate as closely as possible the lives they may have experienced at home and thus help the institution model to involve. While the general aim is to improve residents' quality of life, the perverse effect is to accentuate their isolation from the rest of society. Specialized institutions offer an autarky of residential life based on a more community-based form of accommodation, combining different levels of collectivity, access to services, and the preservation of intimate space. Autarky is a phenomenon designed to meet all the needs of residents. Firstly, by the emancipation from the usual ways of implanting and managing establishment. While the design of nursing home is usu usually governed by a logic of density, with the aim to of reducing constru construction costs, specialized establishments tend to extend over the boundaries increase the amount of working space available for, for patients. Rules governing the use of space between residents and care staff have also been made more flexible, offering fewer day-to-day -day constraints. The permanent supervision identified in the various models is no longer possible, giving people greater freedom of action. The second element is more precise and sophisticated prioritization of spaces and communities. Specialized institutions are made of a number of units designed to work in close collaboration with each other and with the rest of the establishment. The organization of these units follows the same pattern as, as de for dedicated units. The organization implies different level of collectivity from the large group of around one Hundred residents sometimes to the more restricting units. And finally, the autonomy of this establishment means that they are not open to outside activities. Firstly, because the design of the building is based on the desire to close in, favoring the creation of a dense, low poverty building front, protecting the life that takes place inside. The that takes place inside the structures and also limiting observation of the outside world. In this example, for this example, we can see that of the most exposed part of the building that are here, um, um, which will allow us to follow and observe what's going on outside, techni technical space have been positioned for the most part. Vegeta vegetation live in view of residents' bedroom and spaces are turned to inward. So the facade of the building are not very welcoming and all look a bit the same. Another aspect of the autonomy of this establishment is that they seek to bring activities that are usually carved out in urban space indoors. A multitude of rooms follow one other within the structure, very specific use and temporalities. Hairdresser salon, motri motricity room, music room, workshop space. Finally, the hospitality is more inclusive in innovative projects which intend to recreate and integrate residents and establishment into their environment. Innovative projects seek to go beyond the innovative and regulatory framework characteristic of institutional care for the LRD, promoting ordinary life and the home life value of projects. They offer a more integrated form, form of resident life, as close as possible to the domestic universe of references that is home. Space is designed to integrate, share and make invisible the institutional dimension of healthcare. Integration involves mobilizing more generic urban forms, such as the house of village, which are less stigmatizing and more deeply rooted in local architecture. Representation is also based on domestic 
and urban references far removed from the image of the hospital that most establishments have today. Integration also involves working on and questioning the boundaries, both from the part, point of view of the materiality, to limit the feeling of enclosure that can be impotent, using abundant vegetation, for example, to camouflage the fence, fence behind, or by installing a device such as baffle that delimits without enclosing. The freedom afforded to residents are also important, raising the need not to stop them from leaving the establishment, but rather to offer them secure conditions. Mutualization is organized on several levels. The first is the neighborhood, always considered as a resources for projects. We need to make a distinction between two approaches. The first one is uh, the Alzheimer village, where the project is ultimately designed to serve the neighborhood and consequently to be set up in a high area that currently offer few services in order to complete the program and diversify its uses. The crawl house is one where the project is set up in an area that already has the, all the necessary services and where residents have access to them, thus reducing the structure program. In one case, the focus is on involving residents in the life of the neighborhood, while in the other, the aim is to bring the neighborhood into this, the establishment. In both cases, the aim is social integration. Mutualization is also reflecting the organization of space and the multi multiple uses to which room can be put. Over the days, the same route can be used as an office, a meeting room, a dance hall, a, di a dining room. Its use can be adapted to the need and temporality of users, avoiding the succession of empty or closed rooms in the establishment and therefore the surface area of project. Finally, invisibilization means making the disease less visible and reducing the stigmatization aspect of collective care. This involves not only the organization of space and the blending of different functions and players within the establishment, but also a creation of secondary walkways, reducing the visibility of staff movement and the density of space occupation. In the village, for example, uh, between two houses, there is a technical area, just here, for example, um, so, technical area providing storage for technical and medical equipment specific to care of individuals, diapers, sheets, cleaning caddies, keeping them out of the common areas and helping uh, to maintain the home-like image in the houses. Uh, on the other hand, it helps to manage staff coming and going going sorry, within the homes and to maintain the role of the front door, which is to welcome visitors. In the same way, circulation of points of interest within the spaces are duplicated to limit the collective dimension and the density of space occupation. Several passageways, several possible dining areas, several water points all help to prevent uh, people from finding themselves together in the same place which is characteristic of a form of forced collectivity, typical of such establishments. So, uh, in conclusion, our analysis of these different projects shows the role of architecture in supporting people with uh, Alzheimer's disease. Firstly, architecture is a framework for analyzing social processes it allows us to examine the way we look at a population, and in particular, a very vulnerable population, based on the space offered and the rule for uh, using it. Secondly, architecture is a factor of change, responding to uh, evolving living conditions, with advances on standard of comfort and expectation of the home, and especially in the case of Alzheimer's disease, to scientific, scientific and regulatory developments. The third point is that architecture can be too an element of both spatial and social inclusion for people, which can also promote the freedom of action. And last but not least, architecture is also the basis for a new domesticity 
that is better adapted to the needs of people with Alzheimer's and their families. Uh, thank you for your attention. I, uh, I hope I'll be clear. <laughs>